Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Welcome to this bonus episode of the New Warehouse Podcast. This discussion originally streamed live to our LinkedIn page while I was on site at Manhattan Associates Momentum Conference. In this conversation, I discussed their new supply chain planning announcement with Ryan Gifford and how it is tearing down the silos within the supply chain while helping to further unify the supply chain and ultimately make life easier for us in the operations world through better coordination to help match the consumer's expectation. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. All right, we are live here, the New Warehouse podcast with Manhattan Associates, and we're at Momentum 2024 in San Antonio. Today, I'm going to be joined by Ryan Gifford. He is the Senior Director of Supply Chain Solutions for Manhattan Associates, and we're going to talk a little bit about supply chain planning, and we're going to talk about a new announcement that they had uh, just this morning, actually, uh, and we're going to dive into how planning is now coming across multiple different parts of the supply chain, the importance of that, and why that matters. So, Ryan, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Definitely happy to be here in San Antonio. Very nice. Yeah. Very, yeah. So, tell us a little bit about kind of planning uh, from the perspective of because I, I think a lot of times supply chain planning, right, has been kind of more focused on a inventory management perspective, right? right? And this is this is the new warehouse podcast, right? right? So we like to like talk about the warehouse, but Tell us a little bit about how kind of planning is, I guess, maybe in, in current state uh, prior to today's announcement, right. right? How is planning interacting with the warehouse and transportation side of things? Sure. I think historically what we've seen um, up until today is that uh, inventory has been operating within its own silo. So when you look at creating your forecast and your replenishment, um, you don't always take into account the impacts that that would have on the warehouse or on transportation right. and labor. Um, and so you, you order product and you replenish product, but there's not a whole lot of thought given to what the ramifications of what that might look like are um, to the rest of the business, the other areas of the business mm -hmm. and how they need to respond. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of the, the state currently is that they're operating, I, I want to call a little bit of silos. We've been able to mix WMS and TMS data, and you can, of course, understand what days of the week deliveries are happening, um, space within warehouses, uh, but never direct communication between. Yeah, all absolutely. Areas. And I think, you know, any aspect of a business, I mean, when you have that kind of siloed type of structure, right, can be detrimental to the business, right? Can sure. slow you down, not give you the best efficiency as possible. But now with this morning's announcement from Manhattan around supply chain planning, right. tell us a little bit about, I guess, how you guys are tearing down those silos and uh, ripping those apart. Sure, yeah. So today's announcement really centers and circles around unified business planning. Um, the, the thought here is really to integrate all of these pieces together, traditionally at Manhattan or recently with the active platform, mm -hmm. um, WMS, labor, yard, uh, transportation, and Omni have all had the ability to talk to each other, where supply chain planning was kind of left out on an island, so to speak. Right. Um, today's announcement unified all of that. And so what we've done is is integrated everything within the Manhattan Active platform, real-time data, so that now you have your transportation management, your warehouse management, your yard and labor all integrated with your planning. 
And so now you have the ability to look out into the future with your forecasts and see what those needs and right. demands are going to be throughout the rest of the business. And as those needs change in real time, you've got the ability to also react. So it's, it's created a real time integrated solution that has the ability um, to interact with various parts of the business, let those SMEs respond to the information in real time and make mm -hmm. the best business decisions as possible as they're happening. Interesting. Yeah. And I think that's such a, a good thing to be able to break down those silos as we talked about and, and be able to see kind of that, that full visibility of everything yeah. that's happening and then plan around that. Right. Cause sometimes you have, you know, where you're, you're planning that inventory. Right. But then right. on the other side, like the warehouse operation also needs to plan too. And sure. maybe sometimes it's more, more reactive than uh, proactive. It could be right on that side of things. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit about, I guess, from, from Manhattan's perspective. I mean, what was that kind of point or uh, I think the, the term used this morning was the, the nexus, right? right? Where something needed to, needed to change around planning. Like what was really the, the trigger on Manhattan's side to let's try and solve this, let's come up with this solution? Yeah, I think we were looking more at, at what we're terming the, the blue dot generation. Mm -hmm. um, people are more centric. And when you think of the blue dot generation, think of yourself as being a blue dot on an interactive map on your phone, right? Okay. And you're going throughout your day. Um, your needs in that moment are very centric and, and they're very instant. People want um, very quick fixes for the items that they're seeking, whether that's mm -hmm. groceries, uh, whether they're grabbing lunch, their kid's bicycle popped a tire and they need to fix that because you know, the kid has a need there too. Yeah. Um, all those things are happening very quickly. It's all very dynamic. Um, we haven't had the ability to respond quickly to those needs and those demands as, as consumer patterns have changed. Um, it's really the impetus or the, the nexus here is to be able yeah. to respond quicker in real time um, in ways we haven't before without having a delay uh, of supply or, or replenishment back through warehouses and transportation. Uh, maybe the ability to get extra items out to a facility today that had extra sales that we didn't maybe mm -hmm. initially um, anticipate. So um, preventing lost sales, meeting the, the consumer at the shelf is really important. Um, you don't, you don't want to not have product in the right place at the right time. Um, yeah. and, and delays in, in the supply chain have historically meant that you're losing out on opportunity. Our, our goal here is to maximize opportunity. We want to put people in the best um, situation to succeed. And you have to be real time to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that real time is such a, a key factor in this, right? Because like you said, you know, that that blue dot generation where we're looking for things on demand, right? Um, I think Eddie said this morning he was looking for an air mattress, right? right? Yeah, air mattress. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's really important to be able to react to that. And like you said, don't miss out on those, those potential sales opportunities, right? right? I mean, those ultimately end up being lost sales. And I think the market is so competitive in a sense and you know i'm guilty of this i'm you know in the store and they don't have what i need and i'm pulling up the amazon app right, right. in the store and ordering it from them right so yep. so having that flexibility and being able to to um, accommodate this blue dot consumer i think is such the is such a key to be have um, have that success into the future um but tell us a little bit about kind of how this is operating because typically from a planning perspective you would Kind of plan once in the beginning of the day right? right and now this is kind of continuously ongoing right yeah um i think one of the the neat aspects here that, that we've envisioned or, or worked through the use cases it, it really impacts labor mm -hmm. um when when you look at your warehouse and, and the employees yeah. there um they may not be able to meet the demand of, of filling all of the trucks throughout the day right so the the supply chain planning solution can now see that that maybe labor is falling behind and that means that it can go back in and it can dynamically shift um, the orders that are being built for the rest of the day so that the stores get the items that are of most use that day while we're also taking a load off of labor. So mm -hmm. we're not going to negatively impact, but we're going to dynamically adjust uh, within the same day or intraday so that we can help reduce a little bit of the labor um, or at least make sure that the stores get what they're supposed to have midday. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's such a... A great part of it is just that's kind of continuously going in that sense, right? Where it's it's always on. It's always looking. It's always yeah. thinking. Um, it, it may not always be making changes. You don't need it mm -hmm. to make a million changes throughout the day. But when it sees these uh, patterns throughout, you know, maybe trucks are running late. Maybe mm -hmm. there's an impact on transportation. So it's going to be able to take that into account. Obviously, we walk through um, warehouse, but 
there, there's a lot of use cases here where midday something could shift and having the ability to have something always watching and making sure that, hey, I can react now. I don't have to wait. We don't have to have something, you know, a nightly batch run. Yeah. Um, we did away with the nightly batch run. You don't have to you don't have to worry about downtime in your supply chain planning tool anymore. We can ingest that information in real time as it's happening and we can react in real time as it's happening. So help out the the staff in, in your warehouses that are picking orders. Um, maybe they're ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can get more product out today that we don't have to wait till tomorrow. Maybe there's a challenge tomorrow. So we can dynamically adjust to that too. So yeah, a lot of opportunity. Absolutely. And I think that's such a great thing because there's so much and there's been so much conversation around supply chain disruption, right? And yeah. and there's major disruptions, right? Like we all know that one that happened a couple of years ago, right? right. Um, but, you know, there's also, you know, minor disruptions that happen on a daily basis. Like you mentioned, the sure. transportation delay, a truck is delayed. Maybe there's an accident on the highway nearby, something like that. Um, so being able to, you know, constantly adjust to that and, and accommodate that to make sure that you're going to, you know, have your best results and optimize for for the day instead of waiting for the next day to have to update these things and make changes. Then you're going to be able to take opportunity of uh, what we talked about, right? Sure. Not losing those sales potentially or yeah. those opportunities that are out there in the market. So tell us a little bit about, I guess, you know, one of the big focuses for Manhattan obviously is Manhattan Active, right? So. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how Manhattan Active is maybe allowing this supply chain planning to to be more effective and how is it kind of intertwined with all of these different parts of Manhattan Active, like the WMS, TMS, YMS and everything. Sure. So, yeah, we hit on that a little bit earlier. Um, Mm -hmm. All all pieces are now sitting on the same microservices based platform. Um, There's no downtime. It's versionless. So right. we'll, we'll seamlessly integrate new updates into the solution every 90 days. Users won't really notice an impact. Um, they'll have new feature function, but there's not going to be a, a downtime to, to get the new feature function. Um, you don't have to go through an upgrade process ever again. Mm. It's all going to happen naturally um, throughout the solution set. Um, it's also fully extensible. The, the, I think that that's something we've harped back on um, at, at the, the beginnings of this a, a decade ago when we first put our warehouse management, Omni management, and then of course, our, our transportation management on the solution side. Um, it's really just adding in all of the, the feature function that we've been able to derive out of the solution set and, and making it more modern um, mm-hmm. as, as we've added planning now. So integrating all pieces of supply chain kind of within our ecosystem um, to dynamically adjust and shift and understand each other in the best way possible. And that's, that's landed us with unified business planning. Um, which provides dashboards and visibility to see the different areas of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great for executives, but it might also be great uh, for lower level users to understand what the impact is of making a, a real time change. If, if I do update, you know, an order that's supposed to go out, what impact does that have on transportation? What mm-hmm. impact does that have on labor? Um, is there a positive uh, financial ramification to me making this change or am I doing something detrimental to the business? Mm-hmm. You'll have all of that ability uh, within the solution set, um, and, and and it's all on the main um, ecosystem of the Manhattan Active Platform. So interesting, yeah. yeah and I, I love the fact that you can see that impact, like you mentioned, right, yeah. from like uh, an efficiency perspective, throughput perspective, but also from a financial perspective sure. too, right? Because if you're doing something that's detrimental, like then you're kind of like, oh, okay, like we might not want to make that this. decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So so tell us a little bit about, I guess, from that perspective. I mean. How does that help with kind of like the the trickle down almost from from the top, right? I mean, how is that sure. kind of impacting where you know goals are potentially set uh, at a higher level, and then you know you have maybe like a director of ops or warehouse manager that's now in there trying to do some things around, and and now they see like these problems. Tell us a little bit about how that's how that's been effective for some companies. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, out of socks with with supply chain disruptions have been something that that everybody's dealing with um that might be a supplier out of stock it might be a short term it might be a long term um but that that could be a negative impact on on your um your sales and and you need to know whether or not you need to have a supplemental item a a buddy item that's going to replace that um do you need to do you need to shift permanently away from that item um quantifying what lost sales looks like is, is important um it's going to impact everybody's bottom line and that does have broader um, implications throughout the entire 
supply chain. If we've got an out of stock of one of our major items, uh, that might free up more space in a warehouse. It might mean that I need less labor in a warehouse. Mm. Um, if I'm not moving it around, my, my transportation is going to look and feel different. My yard management is going to look and feel different. Um, so broad ramifications of, of out of stocks, but maybe we've got an increase in sales. We need to understand what that looks like. That's going to dynamically yeah. impact also. Um, I need to ramp up the amount of product that I'm, I'm carrying. What's my carrying cost look like? What's my transportation cost look like? Um, how many people do I need? Uh, did I staff enough people to meet what that demand is going to look like in my facilities, in my warehouses? Uh, do we have enough drivers lined up? All of these mm. are, are intricate pieces of the entire puzzle. Um, and, and before they were, I don't want to say operating in silos, but that's kind of what they have been doing is they've been yeah. in their own little sections of the world. And now we have the ability to provide all that within um, the unified business planning modules. Yeah, and I think that's such a, a great thing to be able to, to see that impact. I mean, I think especially as we look at, um, I think there was like one example this morning where they're showing like during peak season, right? Like right. how you're optimizing, I guess, traditionally you're optimizing for inventory, making sure you have the right, right. amount of inventory. And then you're kind of reacting in a sense uh, from a labor perspective and, and things like that. So talk us a little bit through kind of like that scenario of how this tool will now kind of change the way you look at the overall operation like sure. during a uh, peak season or during like uh, I guess a uh, blue dot um, uh, event where there's maybe right. like an influencer or something that has like a, a drop of an item I mean how, how will the tool help you better plan around that not only from the inventory perspective but just kind of like an overall operational perspective sure yeah I, I think to your point it's becoming proactive versus reactive mm. um, the example this morning was it was fantastic and for those that, that didn't see um, it, it's really about whether or not you've got the right staffing to meet what those demands look like uh, yeah. you know if an influencer goes on uh, social media and they post something and that becomes a, a hit thing do we have enough of our normal staff there do we need to hire overtime or extra support staff to come in temp workers um, what's our total landed cost look like if we do that mm. And do we need to dynamically shift when we're bringing items in and how we're bringing them in? Because we still want to meet our service levels. We still have to um, we, we still have to sell product. So at the end of the day, we yeah. need to do that. But how we do it is, is important. And now having the ability to, to look forward instead of basing things on historical demand, um, we can now see what those demands on labor, transportation, and warehouse are going to look like mm -hmm. by integrating planning into that. So there's going to be um, times when your forecast might shift and you might do things to a, a demand planner or a buyer that might feel a little unnatural, mm -hmm. but it's because we now have the, the visibility to impact a bottom line. So maybe we need to back off of our forecast a little bit because it's going to save us on labor. And in the end, that's going to be best because we're still going to meet our service level. But there might be times where we need to ramp up big time and we need to bring in additional labor because we're going to miss the sale. So you need to take those parameters into account when making those decisions. We'll have the visibility now looking forward to do that in a, a more meaningful way mm. to enable more informed decisions. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you said that. Um, you know, it may feel like an, an unnatural thing, right, right, for the planner to do to when they're having this demand, right, to pull back on inventories, sure. right? But looking and seeing those those indicators and having that actual, you know, visualization or the actual data there to, to make that decision and know that it's the right decision versus doing something that seems like out of character or sure. like a different behavior than we're used to. Uh, I think it's such a, a great thing to be able to to see and have that tool, right? Because I think, you know, I mean, we're we're human, right? So we get we get in, kind of get stuck in our ways, the way we do things, and you know, do something different. Sometimes is like we start questioning it, right? But if we're right. able to to see that and have that display and kind of that answer in front of us for us, then you know, I think that goes a long way and right. certainly helps out there. So really a really, very interesting um, tool or solution that you guys have put together here. And I think, you know, certainly something that's going to be impactful across organizations and operations as a whole um, on a very large scale. Um, so if we look at, um, you know, obviously the, the future kind of happened this morning, right? With yeah. The supply chain planning announcement. But if we look towards the future even further from a planning perspective, as you guys see this kind of roll out and start to evolve even more, what does the future around supply chain planning, 
uh, look like for Manhattan or, or just in general for, for organizations? Sure. Yeah. Um, within our ecosystem, obviously, we talked about the the bi-directional information flow. Mm-hmm. Um, we've we had some other announcements today around Gen AI, uh, what that's going to look like. So maybe we do. Um, th- and I think historically, it's been inside out forecasting. So so what are we doing within our organization? What are we seeing sales mm-hmm. internally? Um, the ability to now bring in outside in information. Um, so what are the other data sources look like? What are they telling us? Um, demand sensing patterns that are out in industry. Uh, maybe that is social media. Maybe uh, school lunch menus have been updated. And so we know, you know, that <laughs> okay. pizza is going to hit every yeah. Friday this semester. That's going to have an impact to some food distribution networks. Mm-hmm. Um, picking up those data sources from the outside and bringing them in and being able to analyze those is going to be um where we're headed as an organization to provide that visibility to organizations um, to pull in sources of information that make the most sense to their business mm-hmm. um, and then have that be part of, of their overall solution set. So um, your, your internalized forecast based off of what your demand patterns are looking like, what your sales are looking like, but then also having that external visibility to better understand um, things in industry or, or things in society that might also uh, impact the way that you do business and, and, and sell items. Very interesting. Yeah. And I think it's about getting all those, like you said, external influences and, and how do we kind of harness those and understand that. And, yeah. you know, we certainly don't want, don't want any kids at home uh, going Fridays without pizza at school. We yeah. don't want them to be short, right? <laughs> we want to make that happen. So, so I think it's really, really interesting what you guys are doing here with the supply chain planning and certainly makes a ton of sense um, on how you've looked at this and been able to tackle this problem, which has taken a little while to figure out. I mean, sure. like 10 years, I think it was. And, you know, it, it makes sense now to be able to see that from an overall operational perspective. And then that end of day, like that total uh, landed cost as well of everything that's happening right. and moving together uh, and having that overall unified supply chain that you guys are creating. So, Ryan, I want to thank you for joining me for this conversation so today. Much, Uh, And thank you to those who tuned in. Uh, If you missed the beginning, we will be posting this later in a couple weeks uh, at thenewwarehouse.com as well. Uh, And if you're in for another conversation today, join us live again in about uh, 45 minutes, an hour. I don't have my watch on me, but we'll be doing another one later today on uh, Generative AI with Manhattan as well. So thank you very much and talk to you later. Thanks again, Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.